reverence your presence. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. He has established his name. And this shall reign forever. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. He has and it shall rain for us. The Lord is here. So we thank you for your presence now. Not just another one, you're too much. You're going to be. The Lord is here. Feel his presence right here. He has established the earth. And it shall rain forever. The Lord is here.
It's going to be all right, y'all. Hey! Calorie, low calorie, low sugar, high glycemic bread. God bless everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. I do rejoice and I'm glad in it. I'm grateful for it. I just feel the presence of the Lord in this place already. Can we get started? Welcome, welcome. Again, Happy New Year to those I missed last week. Happy New Year. God bless you. Welcome to 2023. Uh, the Jewish calendar 5783 started back in September, but we're in 2023 in the Gregorian calendar. And I'm so thankful that God is doing some awesome things. He is manifesting his power and God is real. Thank God for all the prophetic voices speaking accurately. I'm, I'm especially proud of my brother up in, uh, my brother is actually Naeem uh, and Hakeem Collins up there at Glory Central in Delaware. I'm, I'm going to sneak in on them soon. Now, y'all are going to be looking for me, but I ain't telling you when, but I'm coming. They're my brothers, and I've been really trying to get a Thursday off to get up there, but I love them so much. Proud of them stepping out to do ministry. But uh, I thank God for Joshua Giles. Thank God for Apostle Eckhart. Thank God for uh, so many of the prophets, Francine and Norman. Oh, my goodness gracious. Thank God. Oh, thank God for all of the prophets. Oh, God. Ryan is strange. Uh, Sandy Norman. Just just great and powerful. Uh, Brother Travis Jennings, uh, Apostle Jennings, and, and uh, my pastor, Dr. Uh, Apostle Avi Hilliard. Just all those prophetic voices. I can't call them all by name, but Cindy Trim and, 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 and Christine Kane. And, it's just so many that are speaking the word of the Lord with power and signs following. So I'm excited for what God is doing in the body of Christ. Can we get started? I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's in this studio right now. Lord, we're not going to wait. We're going to go ahead and get into this word. We're going to declare what thus saith the Lord, and Lord, you will be glorified. So we cast down everything, sickness, disease, infirmity, maladies, ailments. We cast down demonic encroachment. We cast out any, all, and everything that would seek to hinder this word. The Lord, you arise, and every enemy be scattered in the strong name of Jesus. And Father, we give you praise. Lord, take me out of self. Use me for somebody else. This is always my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hold up your Bibles, everybody, whether you got it by tablet like I do, whether you have it by the actual page, whether you have it, my goodness, by your phone. However you got the word, hold it up and let's declare it again. But Lord, I thank you. Come on. Lord, I thank you. 
that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy, a basic instruction before leaving earth. Come on, say it. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much more than blessed because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. Father, your word is a light, a lamp unto my feet, a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path, giving me present clarity, future illumination. And I hide your word in my heart, Lord, so that I will not sin against you. Speak today and give me understanding, and I'll keep your word. How this is serving me on the cross, Father, that all of you be seen and heard, and not him, not even me. And Lord, as a result of what I hear this day, I'm going to leave this environment better than I came to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, beloved, let's get right into it. I got a word, I got a word, I got a word. I want to talk from the topic, development of a God-first mentality. Oh, hold on now. Hold on to your seats. Development of a God-first mentality. Can I say from the onset that I am deeply concerned for all too many in this present time that we're living seem to make God secondary to almost everything else. Please don't take offense at what I'm about to say. But beloved, if you're still alive through this global uh, pandemic, and you're still here and you're healthy, you may have a little sniffle here and there, but you don't have COVID don't have the flu. I mean, you provided for a roof over your head, clothes on your back, shoes on your feet, food on your table. How many of us can say that's my status? God's been good to me. Yet, there are so many making God secondary, giving God crumbs and leftovers instead of giving them first. I'm concerned that it seems like God and his kingdom, listen to me everybody, it seems like God and his kingdom is a distant second to our careers, our pursuits, making and keeping money. I'm going to say this, don't misunderstand it, it's important. But who can best give you self-care than God? There's some of us, I'm not going to church. I need self-care. Where else are you going to find a deeper measure of self-care than in the one who made you and yourself? We are putting family before God. Family call will drop everything about God and run to attend a family meeting or a gathering or a reunion. And some of us lack the ability to tell them, I see you when worship is over. I don't know. I don't know. We put friendships before God. And we also put entertainment and fun before God. I, I, I don't want you taking offense. If the shoe fit, put it on. <clears throat> because there are a whole lot of us that have ceased from living to and according to Matthew 6.33 anymore. Can I quote that for your holy mind's memory? The Bible says in the King James, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right standing with God. And all these things shall be added unto you. What things? I just read you a list. Time with family, entertainment, self-care, Saving money, making money, doing the things that you do. I mean, we can go on down the list. All these things will be added to you if you put God first. I like how the living translation puts it. Can I read that? Sure, I can. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. Let me emphatically state, we all need self-care. I need a vacation with my wife very badly. 
But until I'm able to get it, I'm not going to stop going to church. I'm not going to stop worshiping God. I'm just going to sleep in the day. God, my prayer time not that important to me. And I'm not going to give him the dread that God understands. Because if I'm going to get anything I need, it's going to come from his presence. Not from my efforts to do it for myself. Yes, there are some things we should do for ourselves. But in doing for ourselves, that don't mean put God second. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, let me move on because I don't want to get on the soapbox, but I want you all to hear me very clearly. Because, beloved, we are in the time in our lives that we're all being tempted to make God an option or to make God secondary or to put him behind everything and everyone else. I want you all to receive this reminder now because... When you do that, you're very much a part of church. You're very much a part of Christianity, the religion. I mean, we go to worship. Some churches are hour. Some churches are 90 minutes. We're so seeker sensitive. If we go over 90 minutes or even 75 minutes, we're afraid folk won't come back no more. And the average person may not, you know. I have a concern about that because we'll go to a movie for two hours and can't sit in the house of God. Bishop, stop. You, you, you can't talk like that, Apostle. You got to understand this is a different day. What's so different about it? We still need God, right? We still need his presence, right? We still got a devil trying to devour us and the works of darkness seeking to overtake us even more now than ever. But the kingdom of God is God's way of operating in the earth. Perfect O'Donnell put it this way, God's way of doing things. That's the kingdom of God. And we all know that God cares and is concerned about our well-being. Can I get a witness? <clears throat> Can somebody write, forgive my cough, a little tickle in the throat, I wrong pipe. Can somebody write in the chat that I know God cares about me? I know that God cares about it. Hallelujah. So if we know this, why do we keep him at a distance? Why do we prioritize him behind everyone and everything else? Now I want y'all to go with me on this. I'm taking my time for a reason and being methodical. Because, beloved, I, I have a concern. I have a concern because I was talking to a very good friend of mine the other day, who's a pastor, very successful pastor, I might add. And he said, man, I think everybody who's coming back to church then came back already. Obviously, he's having the same struggles as many other churches of people not returning. I'm trying to find out why. The church didn't give you COVID. The church don't have COVID in it. If anything, you'll be healed in the presence of the Lord. Some of you served as greeters and doorkeepers. I don't like the word usher, but the word doorkeeper is a word I use for that function. And now your function is gone missing because you don't want to come back to the building. You feel like there's something in the building or reach out and get you. You've let the devil deceive you. Now, I'm not saying every time the door is open, you should be there. That is not what I'm saying. But I'm just trying to figure out what's up with believers. We rather stream and then we get tired of streaming. And then we fall asleep on the stream and wake up when there's been addiction. Then we say we'll catch it on a restream and, and don't do it. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm offending you. I'm not fussing. But I have to discuss. What's up? Go with me on this, okay? I, I want to remind us of a few things about our great God. Can I do that? I want to look at a couple of texts that speak of his greatness, his, his awesome nature. Go with me. Look at Exodus 34, 5 through 8. The occasion 
when uh, Moses kept asking God, show me your glory, show me your glory. Let me see your face. Here's one of the responses God gave him. In Exodus 34, 5 through 8, and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there, talking about Moses, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands. My God, I feel the presence of the Lord. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped the awesome God. Whoa, stick with me. Psalm 46 and 1, one of my favorite scriptures. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Look at Psalm 54 and 4. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He's a refuge, he's a strength, very present help in trouble. He's an upholder of your soul. Can I talk more? Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tongue. The righteous run into it and is safe. Man, when I researched this one out, I was about to dance. God have mercy. Yay! Lord have mercy. Woo. Hebrews 12, 28 and 29. Got me wanting to dance. Why? Wherefore, Hebrews 12, 28, 29. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Ow! Lord have mercy. God is a consuming fire. Man, if I stay here any longer, we just going to just lose it. it, it it's going to be over. I won't be doing much teaching or declaring or expounding. I'll be just in the floor and y'all just go ahead and log off. But my goal today, my calling and my task today is to Cause us to put God back in first place and to declare the awesomeness of God. That, that's what I'm here for. I'm not going to make you feel guilty because you choose not to come back to church. But I'm just asking you to think about you can go to the movies, you can go to the football game, and nobody loves football more than me. I'm praying for Lamar, not just so the Ravens can beat Cincinnati. I'm praying for that young man that he not be hurt and that there be a sovereign work on his knee. Just because he needs it to heal. Just like we all pray for DeMar. And just like we all pray for Peyton Hillis. I want to see God do something in, in all those who have infirmities. But I, I want to ask you. grown to know God in a certain way. And I want to point to myself because I can only talk about my experience. I talk about what I see in others, but I, I'm going to deal with it from a me perspective. I've grown to know him to be everything I've ever needed, everything I've ever longed for. When I was a young believer, I I kept the glad glads a long time. I still got the glad glads. Somebody wondered, what's the glad glads? You know, when you first say, everybody got to know you say, everybody got to hear your testimony. And I've gotten wiser. I'm, I'm a senior saint now, so to speak. Not by age, but by experience. I've been walking with God a long time. And I'm not tired yet. But I've grown to know him in the terms that the older saints used to say. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Can I get a witness? 
I've grown to know that about the mighty God, that every day spent putting him first is a day of great joy. No, I'm not saying I don't have concerns. I'm not saying I don't face challenges. I do. But because I seek him first and his presence first, he's with me in the struggle. I've grown to know him as not only Jehovah Shama, but Jehovah Shamar, the one who delivers, the one who comes to my aid and rescues. Jehovah Shammah, he never leaves me, never forsakes me. I've come to know him as Baal Perazim, the God of the breakthrough. God have mercy. What I'm concerned about is do we as believers remember how awesome God is and why we should put him first? I think that if I can boldly declare this, I think God's been good to every one of us that none are without an excuse. None have an excuse, I should say, about why we're so busy putting God first. I'm going to say this, and I, again, am not putting down self-care, mental health. But I do remember when my heart was overwhelmed, like David said, I prayed and the Lord led me to the rock that was higher than I. Yes, he did provide people to talk to. Yes, he did give me people that would give me Holy Ghost therapy. Listen to my concern. The Holy Ghost himself makes intercession for me with groanings that can't be uttered. <clears throat> so I believe in mental care, but why should that preclude you from being in the house of God? I hear some of y'all say, well, the reason why I need so much mental care is because I'm saying something got on my nerves. I understand. I'm not going to say I'm co-signing with you, but I understand. Because church folk can be trying at times when they are in their religious groove, but not even thinking about kingdom. See, in kingdom, we don't cause strife on the regular. In kingdom, we don't like strife. We quickly move to solve it. But there's some people maybe listening to me today. You, you've been in an argument with another believer for years now. Now, let me be straight with you. There are some things people do that makes you love them from a distance. Now, you don't stop loving them, but until you see manifested change, you keep your distance so you won't be vexed. The Bible says be angry and sin not. There are some people that are arrogant. There are some people that don't really care what they say and how they act. And their actions sometimes rub you the wrong way. I understand. I don't want to be one of those people rubbing somebody the wrong way. But I understand there are folk like that in this world. But I'm concerned that we've somehow forgotten how to put God first. Can I make some declarations? Because this is what this is all about. He is too awesome to lose all of him. Can I get a witness? He is too wonderful to compare to any other. Hmm. Lord, help me finish this. He is too much God to be lowered to a level beneath the longing, the lust, and the wants of mankind. How dare I subjugate God to my lust? He's too overwhelming to be casual about. Y'all hold on for this, because there's a lot of lazy things. I mean, God won't pray. Why somebody pray for you all the time? What's wrong with you? Well, me and God not on speaking terms nowadays. He ain't answered my prayer from two weeks ago. Can I explain why God makes us wait from time to time or takes us the long road? There are things in us that he sees that need to be developed, matured, 
there are attitudes in us that he wants to be shaken out. He wants to be sifted. Now, God is a steward, a wise God. I often say God is a businessman. Your character has to sustain the anointing on your life. There are a whole lot of people that got anointing and they got what call, folk would call them juice. They can preach a house down and build it back up again. But out of the pulpit, they mean the snakes, arrogant, standoffish, thinking you God's only preacher. What in the world wrong with some of us? The anointing on your life must be supported by the character of your life. Yet we got people that will be arrogant and then casual, then lazy, or even treat God as a secondary option. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can I remind you that he alone is God? He will not be disrespected. He will not be dishonored. You may not get away with it you know, um, long term and you won't. You may get away with it for a week, two weeks, even a year, two years. I mean, God may not call you on the carpet. The Bible says he's long suffering, but he will not be dishonored. He will not be taken lightly. In one way or the other, he's gonna show who he is. I don't want you afraid of him. I do want you to fear him though with reverence or fear. The great God, the mighty God, is the awesome God. And many of you that know me, um, I try to reserve that word awesome just for talking about him. My vocabulary is, is limited. I am a college educated man. But beloved, when I'm talking about God, I, I just can't find enough words. He's all that. He's too magnanimous for religion. Can I get into this? Y'all better help me. I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. He's too all-encompassing for any one sect, religion, or denomination. We still on that mess, you know. Pandemic done come. Some denominations have lost many pastors. One particular denomination that I love not necessarily the denomination, but I have a lot of friends that are in it. I love them. But they lost several pastors in one particular Midwest city from this pandemic. I mean, all these things are going on to make us say, Lord, I'm still here. I thank you. I don't miss represent my concern about those who are not still here but at the end of the day i'm still here and i would dare treat you casually i would dare post pandemic for the most part still run up in church late if anything pandemic should teach us to be on time for the house of god so i still got this mentality well church ain't gonna get started until i get there who are you? See, that's when we come to service instead of coming to worship. People can wait. I'm the musician. People can wait. They ain't paid me enough anyway. How dare you? Let me, let me calm down. How can anybody be casual about the Lord? How can anybody be slow for lazy? when it's concerning serving in this house, which is worship. We serve outside, we worship inside. So if you're an usher or doorkeeper, that's worship. If you're singing on the choir, that's worship. If you're um, collecting the offering, that's worship. If you are, um, you know, security, that's worship. Whatever we do in the house is worship. And all we do outside is service. I, um, People kind of get tired of me sometimes. Hey, what time service start? And I said, worship starts at so-and-so and so-and-so. Oh, Bishop, 
but it's it, it's time that we call it what it is. It's not service. It's worship. Why are you getting caught up on that? You going down that hill or something? No, no. I just I'm just so into kingdom, and I'm ready to put aside everything that smacks of religion, everything that smacks of colloquialisms that are not necessary and non-essential. Beloved, I want Jesus so much. I can't do this anymore. I can't be casual. I can't stomach casual. I cannot stomach lazy about God. He not only should be first, he deserves to be first. Can I get a witness? Somebody write that in your chat. God deserves to be first. And I think all of us can think of a plethora of reasons why he should be first. He should be first. And let me make this statement because I got to move to the close because I'm not trying to make nobody mad twice. Mad that I'm saying what I'm saying and then mad because I've been saying it a long time. So uh, let me let brevity kick in. But I got to say it. True kingdom mentality is a God first mentality. Can I get a witness? True kingdom mentality is a God first mentality. Above all others, above my pursuits and my gains, above principalities and powers, he deserves first place. I'm trying to be calm. I'm trying my best to be calm. I, I remember a song that we used to sing more frequently. I see the Lord high and lifted up, seated on the throne of my life. Anybody remember that? I see the Lord high and lifted up, seated on the throne of my life. Y'all got to forgive me. For he is holy. He is holy. Jesus. He is holy. Seated on the throne of my life. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh my, 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 my God. My God. Oh, don't you just love him? How could we be so casual about the great God? I know the Bible says that in the last times, perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, covenant breakers, truth breakers, incontinent, fierce. But they did not give names, addresses, or locations. Can't we fight the feeling of putting God behind everything else? Can't we remember how good he is. He's above all others. He's above my pursuits and gains. He is above principalities and powers. He deserves to be first. I, I gotta close, but how, how? How do we develop a God first mentality? Quite simply, it is the only step. We put him first intentionally. 
Did y'all hear me what I said? How do we develop a God first mentality? We put him first intentionally. Let me let me give you this analogy. Sister Susie Cake. Susie Cake. <laughs> and we get that name from. I don't know. Sister Susie Cake is going to church. Sister Susie Cake gonna wear one of those church hats. About yay wide. About yay tall. And, and she going she going to prance up in there and uh, take her and her hat to the house of prayer. Okay. Before she leaves the house, there are things that Sister Susie Cake does. She makes sure the hat fits, fits properly. She makes sure the orientation of the hat is on her head the right way. The front is actually the front. The back is actually the back. She'll make sure that the hat matches uh, what she's wearing for the day. Yes, she will. She'll make sure that she has a matching purse with matching shoes. <clears throat> I'm talking about dressing properly now. She gonna go through that hat. She gonna probably have to come up not looking lame. That's just a Susie cake. She's gonna intentionally look in the mirror. She gonna look in it while she's getting dressed. She gonna look in it while she's about to leave the house. She gonna look in it one last time before she leaves the house. She's gonna look in it once she gets in the car. She's going to look at it during the ride to church. By this time, she done took her hat off because it won't fit in the car. But she's going to look at it once she gets to the house of prayer. She's going to go to the bathroom. Now, she went to the bathroom before she left to drive the church. But she got to go once more when she gets in the church. Sister Susie Kate is being intentional about her looks. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sister Susie Kate intentionally going to make sure she look good. Now, she's not the focus. She's not the center of attention. Maybe Sister Susie Kate needs to remember that. Yeah, we're going to take our time to look good because we're going to go in the house of God, presenting ourselves in a way that honors and reverences God. But we're not the focus. We put our outfits, in many cases, before God. Brothers, I didn't talk about us. We want to look good. Yeah, we want to look good. You should look good. Whether you dress down or dress up every Sunday, you want to match. You want to be decent smelling. Please, you want to, <laughs> you want to be presentable. But the priority is putting him first. If what I'm wearing is a distraction, if what I'm wearing makes me late, if what I'm wearing makes me not praise him or not want to bless him, then I don't wear it. Now, that's how I feel about it, you know? Because when he's first, he's really your Lord. And everything else comes secondary. You put him first intentionally. When he's above all, he's first. He alone sits on the throne of your life. He is first. Now, I, I'm about to close. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I can get into a whole lot of other stuff, but I don't need to. We know, we know that we are missing the mark. We know that we are not putting God first. We know that we're still carrying out some of the same behavior that we did before the church was closed down. And we came back doing the same stuff. Well, that's just the way we are culturally. I've actually had good friends tell me, you know, we, we wear hats because it's our culture. When the word of God is clear that the woman's hair is her covering. I'm sorry, that's what the word says. We get on people about wearing pants to church. Women can't wear pants to church. I agree, women should wear men's pants to church. They should wear women's pants. God's not moved by that woman's pants. Now, she should be modest. Um, she shouldn't be wearing tight pants. And brothers, this is for us too. Nobody want to look at you like that. Behind all tight. Walking like something wrong with you. Maybe maybe that's the culture now. I, I, I'm just concerned. What are we doing? 
What are we doing? This is God's house. We're disrespecting him. We're dishonoring him and trying to say we have in church. Is he on the throne of your life? That's all I want to know. Are we getting back to a putting God first mentality? Because I'm telling you, saints, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you as a prophet, I'm telling you because many of you know, I walk in the office of apostle. I walk in the office of prophet as well. And uh, I'm telling you, I don't announce it. I don't go around with a sign or a turban on my head. I don't go around with big business cards. Many of you know me as a man of God. And I am going to do my best to not make you wrong in calling me a man of God. No, I'm not perfect, but I'm loved perfectly and I'm striving to please him. But things are coming. But I was talking to somebody the other day. I'm very much afraid that some of the things that are going to happen in our world this year are going to run us back to the church. There's some things that are coming down the pipe this year. And you're going to be shaking your head like, wow, what in the world? I believe that there's a time that is coming that we're going to really have to put up or shut up regarding being kingdom. Not church. Not churchy. Kingdom. I'm calling on the leaders. Leaders of leaders, leaders of many, leaders of few. I prayed for all y'all this morning. I prayed diligently for you. We got to get back to a God first mentality. We got to seek him first. We got to teach the people, admonish the people, instruct the people. We need to get back to God first. Oh, I understand. I understand many things that we're all dealing with, and our minds are battled, battle-worn. Our hearts are being pulled in diverse directions. But if God be God, serve Him intentionally put Him first. But if Baal be God, let Him show how God He is. I've been looking for a long time. Baal has yet to reveal himself as the God. But yet we keep on serving Baal's temptations and Baal's characteristics. We halt between two opinions and God is saying, choose me. Make a choice. But I, but I know this may seem kind of hard to some of y'all and Bishop, who done got you upset? I'm not upset with nobody. Just that as a man of God, my heart is troubled as I observe the saints being a person that prays for the body of Christ, intercedes, I'm concerned. And I'm sure others are as well. So you can't have an expectation without education. I can't ask you to fulfill a task that I haven't taught you how to fulfill. I cannot expect you to fulfill it if I haven't empowered you to fulfill it. So we must understand it's time. It's time to put God first. How you do it? Intentionally. Just put him first. Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Get, get him. Allow him to be in that place that he belongs in. Father, I've done what you told me. I've taken these moments and not tried to be Lord fussing or raising a bunch of hyperbole or seeking to speak condemnation. But Lord, if and by way of conviction, as the Holy Ghost has been speaking through this your servant, Lord God, if conviction comes, we're thankful. We're thankful because conviction shows us we're not that far from you. We must turn if my people will call by my name, you say, shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from our wicked ways. You promised that you would hear from heaven. You will forgive our sin and heal our land. Lord, we got to put you first. 
Stop treating me casually. Stop being lazy about the things of God and put you first. Lord, hear my prayer right now for those that are struggling, saying, I know my life is out of order. I, I, I just have been doing what I'm doing a long time. It's going to be difficult. Let them have the courage to say yes and just do it. Just put you first. Lord God, wake up that lion in the part of the tribe of Judah. That praise, that roar that used to be there for so many that just a whimper now because life has really beat them up. And we have not exercised our weaponry. But Lord, I pray that we wield our sword of the word. Declare what thus saith the Lord. And Lord God, let us get back to putting you first. Look at me. If there's somebody that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, let me introduce him to you because I know him very well. He's my Lord, my Savior, my God, my King, my Father, my Abba, my Keeper. I know him, and I can introduce you to him. Could you just simply say to him right now, Lord, I come as I am. I don't bring a resume. I don't bring how good I've been. I come as I am. Lord, you died for me as I am. You saved me from sin as I am. Lord, do that for me today. I believe that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe you came in the flesh, crucified, rose on the third day, and you're coming back for me, and I want to go back with you. Save me today, Lord. Cleanse me from unrighteousness, and I'll serve you the rest of my days. Now, if you prayed that prayer, beloved, the Bible said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you're saved. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession made to unto, unto salvation. Now, there's another step you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, because without the power of the Holy Ghost, you're not going to be able to live right for the Lord. You're going to be back in the law. You're going to be back into flesh focus. And I'm telling you, we need the Holy Ghost. So, you hear me? Get in a good church. Be taught the word. Be, be admonished in the word. Be discipled in the word. And with all your heart, let God arise and every enemy be scattered. I love you. That's why I'm telling you the truth. You need to put God first. Well, God bless you. Sunday coming will be live in in uh, virtual worship and uh, it's going to be at 10 a.m. over many of these same venues that you're watching us now. There's a powerful word coming and God's going to do some awesome things in our midst. All to equip us to go out from worship to into the world to serve. Be with us 10 a.m. this Sunday Eastern time for Sunday worship and let God be glorified. God bless you. Got to leave now. If you need to call us, we're at 443-776-0255, 443-776-0255, or email us at lbcministry at yahoo.com, lbcministry at yahoo.com. Then you can also go on our website, that's lbcbaltimore.org, lbcbaltimore.org. And you can reach us through any three of those communication mediums. We'll be here for you. Gotta go now. Man, we love you. But let God arise and every enemy be scattered. Be blessed. And God be with you. Will.